Oh, hi there. Didn't see you. Or, well, I'm filming. This was just for show, so. But this is the hell quarter. And if you thought it was an organ, you're forgiven. And although it can act as such, this is actually, and the form factor might give it away, a guitar amplifier. <laughs> It's a recorder based guitar amplifier and it is by far the dumbest thing I've ever built and trust me I've built a lot of dumb things But it's also the best I've ever built I think but we'll get back to that Welcome back. Before I continue I'll have to apologize because the video clips that you just saw are basically all the video clips I have from the building process and the reason for that is I had the idea for this one way before I had any notion of posting anything to YouTube which is gonna make this a show-and-tell basically and the plan is I'm going to walk you through the front and then we're going to have a stroll on to the back and have a look at the interesting bits and then if we're lucky we'll have a demonstration at the end and full disclosure I have tested this before once before I had to do major redesign of the fan system and then I had the brilliant idea why don't I do the final testing on camera with you to make it more interesting <sighs> so that's the plan. And without any further delay, just let's crack at it, shall we? And here we have it in its full glory. And the main centerpiece is, of course, the 25 recorders. Now, the reason it's 25 is because that will give me two whole octaves to play with. And each and every one of these recorders are connected to their individual air hose behind this cover. And these covers are actually the first project I made after I got a CNC router. 
So everything else you see here is made painstakingly by hand. That means that all these holes in the bottom and middle plate are made manually with a Forstner bit. And up here is a press fit connection that connects the mouthpiece to the air hose, which is done manually by a Dremel multi-tool. Now let me show you. I think I'm not lying when I'm saying that this job was the most nerve-wracking of the entire process, because every one of these slots needs to be perfectly airtight. Because if not, the recorders won't play. And that's okay if you're screwing up here on the first one or second one, and then have to starting all over again. But if you've done all this and you came to the 23rd or maybe second to last, and then you screw up, you got to do them all over again. Now I lucked out. I think I only had to redo this top plate two, maybe three times. Not sure. Maybe I just suppressed that memory. But yeah, if I were going to do everything all over again, of course, I would use the CNC and that would chug out this in like 10 minutes. But then I would also do everything else in plywood because I like the aesthetics of that better. But you live and you learn, and you buy more tools. And then you have the second panel. Behind here it used to be the original fans. Um, turns out they were so loud that they overpowered the sound of the recorders. So I had to go for an external solution. Oh hi, this is the voiceover guy. I would like to tell you something that I learned during this project. And that is something I would like to call the fan triangle. The fan triangle has three angles. The first being cheap, the second being airflow, and the third being silent. Now you can only have two of these at any given time. So you can have a cheap fan with decent airflow, but that sure won't be silent. You can have a cheap fan that is silent, but that will never give you the airflow that you need. And last but not least, it is possible to have a silent fan with decent airflow. But there is a reason why churches have separate fan rooms for their organs. Because a silent fan with decent airflow, that's the holy grail of fans. And that doesn't come cheap. And while we're on the subject, Recorders. Sure, one recorder is cheap, two recorders even, but 25? Not so much. And then you'll need 25 solenoid valves, 25 relay boards. That's not cheap either. At this point, I'm afraid to calculate the total cost of this project. So I'm just going to write it off as a hobby, where the point is having fun and learning as you go. And then don't talk too much about it. So let's just move along. And here is where all the electronics and the brain of the operation is. And in front you have a few standardized connections. This is a jack input for a guitar. Uh, this is a jack output in case you want to connect a secondary device. This is the MIDI input. There was also an option of a MIDI output, but I didn't really see the use of that. And this used to be the fan control for the internal fans, but this is now rigged to control the air pressure from the external fan box. And this was basically fans off and then one fan, two fan. And this, well, on and off button, kind of self-explanatory. So yeah, that's basically the front. It's an easy setup, it's a nice setup. The interesting stuff happens when you go around back. Welcome to the dark side. As you can see, I have opted for a traditional guitar amplifier layout with an open back. That is not because I'm lazy, although I am, but that's because it will give me easy access while working on it. And to be honest, this is a work in progress and probably forever will be, so it's gonna stay open. So what you see here is 
at the top is what I call the wind chest. I think that's the proper word. I stole it from the church organ dictionary. And this area here, which is not very densely populated at the present time, is where the fans lived. But today, there's just a connection point for a hose, and you have two power outlets. And these are controlled by the control knob that you saw on the front, so that I'm able to control the external wind chest. And by external wind chest, it's basically just a vacuum that can also blow, which I hope it does, but also don't, if you get what I mean. And the purpose of the wind chest is to be pressurized, so that when you open a solenoid valve, it will let air through the hose, which go to the respective recorder, and you will get sound. All the solenoid valves are connected to these bus bars, which are basically some brass railings I drill a lot of holes into. And then each and every solenoid valve is controlled by its own relay, which I mounted down here in what I call the relay plate. Now both the relay board and the bus bar board are slid into these notches, which means I can pull them out, modify them, and put them back in with these. Now because of these solenoid valves are so heavy, with all the cables and the bus bars, I had to put in these bracings. In addition to keeping the weight up, they also make sure that these plates are secured. I might redesign this at a later stage, when I probably are coming back to <laughs> redo all these wires, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. Now, this is the brain of the operation. Or, I really should say brains. Because these two cards are MIDI widgets. They were designed by a guy called John Staskowicz, if I'm pronouncing his name right. And they are basically I.O. boards, 23 channels each, controlled by MIDI. Unfortunately, I needed 25 channels. So what I ended up doing was buying two and setting them up in such a way that they control one octave each. Then maybe a year later I lucked out again when I stumbled across this unit on top here. Because that translates the analog audio signal from a guitar to a MIDI signal. Prior to this, I had to install some elaborate mics on my electric guitar, which enabled it to talk to a Roland guitar synthesizer, which in turn gave a MIDI signal out in which I could connect to this. That was an uh, elaborate setup, it was an expensive setup, and it didn't really work. I don't have very good well, track record with anything Roland. So, that's being said, I could now just sell my guitar synthesizer and be a happy camper, because I got this. It has a downside. It's not polyphonic, um, which means when I connect my guitar to it, it can only play one note at a time. So this is basically a solo amplifier. But the whole system is designed to be modular, so one day I'll find a polyphonic unit or somebody will create one, and I'll be happily swapping this one out for that. And to the left here you can see the power supply. Originally it was only this tiny one you can see here in between this hot mess of wires. Now this turned out not to be big enough because even though the solenoid valves are efficient, they are not very efficient when it comes to electricity. Or, that depends on how you put it. They are very good at using electricity. And by doing so, if I'm playing a chord with three or more notes, they draw so much current that I get a significant voltage drop in the system. And the MIDI widgets and the analog to MIDI converter really doesn't want to play along if you have a significant voltage drop. So I had to rethink everything. And that's where this big boy comes into place. 
Now that's a 400 watt power supply with its own fan and everything. And its job is only to provide power to the solenoid valves. So the original power supply now only supplies the relays, which are not as power hungry as the solenoid valves. And then at the back behind the audio to MIDI board, there is a 9 volt power supply because the audio converter and the MIDI widgets, they really want 9 voltage, much like an Arduino or Raspberry Pi want today. And last but not least, inside here it's like a 2,500 watts AC voltage regulator which controls the airbox. So yeah, that's basically it. And don't pay any attention to the clock on the wall. It's not even the same day. So, let's hook it up. See if we can't make any noise. <laughs> it's so dumb. It's so dumb. Oh, it sounded even worse than I could possibly imagine. Um, on the bright side, the latency is really good. I mean, the only latency issue is between the solenoid valves and the building of air pressure. And that's negligible. I mean, that's playable. But the recorders? <laughs> a friend of mine told me how to tune them. I haven't done that. Um, the setup is really not built for me to individually tune the recorders. It's obvious that needs to happen. But at this point I'm really happy. I mean, everything works. Nothing blasts into fire. Um, and yeah, the noise issue is not so bad, but yeah, the recorder doesn't play very loud, so you can hear the ticking of the relays, but I mean, that is, that is just a percussion element to the entire setup. So yeah, I'm pleased. But now I'm gonna let it rest for a while. I'm just gonna put it on the shelf, I know it works, and then one day I will probably get the polyphonic audio to MIDI card and then I'll look into well basically a recorder array that allows me to tune the recorders individually. There might even well it might be beneficial to upgrade to more expensive recorders but I'm going to try the tuning bit first because if that doesn't work I don't want to spend more money on this because as I already told <laughs> I've sunk way too much money into this so so yeah that's it hope you enjoyed <laughs> 